Back again for the fourth or fifth time investigating some of the claims made by the ever popular Dr. Berg. In this spotlight episode, we'll be discussing some claims on the nature of hydration, how drinking caffeine, alcohol, and sugar dehydrate you, and believe it or not, water dehydrates you too. If that blew your mind, then Put the pieces back together and let's scientifically analyze the veracity of these claims. Before we listen in, if you're new here, you may wonder why you would even consider listening to me, which is a fair question. Uh, I'm a PhD candidate in molecular medicine, specializing in cell physiology. I teach physiology at university and I have my master's in exercise physiology. I may be younger than Dr. Berg, I may be less world experienced than Dr. Berg, but I do hold several qualifications that Dr. Berg does not. And my youth does not mean I am de facto wrong. So I would ask you to keep your opinions open-ended. With those disclaimers, let's get into it. So from the get-go, I'll say that Dr. Berg misses the mark several times throughout, but he does get a few things correct. So I'll be pointing those out as well. In this first clip, he explains the water myth, so allow him. You know, some years ago, I did uh, a video on this whole water myth that everyone needed to drink a certain amount of water or else they're going to be dehydrated. And it kind of shook up quite a few people because everyone knows that eight glasses of water is like the law. You have to drink at least eight glasses of water because your body is mostly water. And so that video created a confusion because when you tell a person the opposite theory of what they're basing this uh, concept of water on, it can really put someone into a uh, kind of a confusion. Here, he mentions this long told water myth involving eight glasses of water. You may have heard it yourself. He's right though. It is a myth. It certainly won't hurt anyone, but it isn't as necessary as many have made it out to be. First thing you need to know is what is hydration? Is hydration just water in your cells? Actually, no, it's not. How does that water get into the cell and out of the cell? The water gets in and out of the cell through little channels that get help with electrolytes. And electrolytes are like these um, electrically charged minerals that in different concentrations inside and outside the cell you'll get a flow, a certain flow, either going outside the cell or going inside the cell. And so a truly hydrated cell has the right amount of electrolytes inside and outside with the right amount of fluid. And a dehydrated cell is basically an imbalance of electrolytes and fluid. It's not just a lack of water. In fact, if you drink too much water, you're gonna dilute certain electrolytes and create dehydration in certain parts of your body. There's a condition called hyponatremia. That means low sodium in the blood. One cause would be you just drank a lot of pure water without any salt, and now you diluted this sodium throughout the cell. Next, he rhetorically asks if the term hydration is defined as water in your cells. Then he might surprise you in saying that no. It isn't just water in your cells. He mentions electrolytes, which are necessary atoms inside and outside of our cells that allow our cells to function. I'm not gonna go into the physiology here beyond to say that he's right. Uh, Electrolytes are critical components of our cells. They have to be the right ones and in the right concentrations inside and outside of our cells. They allow us, for example, to move. Without electrolytes, our nerve cells don't activate just as one of many, many examples. I think he's stretching the definition of hydration here because most people think of hydration as water, which is fine. Uh, Electrolytes are necessary, but including them in the definition of hydration is generally just preference. Uh, Whatever, let's just agree here. Hydration is water plus the proper electrolytes. However, Where he loses me is saying that if we drink too much water, we dilute our electrolytes and cause dehydration. He mentions hyponatremia, which is a condition of the body where we have too little of sodium, a key electrolyte in our body. That isn't dehydration. That's caused by the opposite, so overhydration. 
However, in the real world, you aren't only consuming water for multiple days over. You're usually consuming food, right? Well, there's plenty of sodium in your food to avoid this issue, even if you drink eight glasses of water. That said, if you're drowning yourself with gallons upon gallons of water each day, then yes, it's an issue, and it still isn't dehydration that's causing you to go into a coma. One last thing, your body comes equipped, unless you received a defective model, in which case you'll want to send it back for a refund, but normally your body is equipped with an organ system known as the renal system, your kidneys. This system is sensitive to changes in water as well as changes in electrolytes and will actually reabsorb electrolytes from your urine and re-inject them into your blood. Secondarily, it begins to make you pee a lot. So you lose minimal amounts of electrolytes and you're releasing large amounts of water, hence why your pee is clear or light yellow. Even with this mechanism, you can drink more water than you can pee. So as I said, drinking gallons on gallons is pointless and can be dangerous, but a tempered eight glasses of water is not as life-threatening as it's made out to be here. So back to Dr. Berg. And then you have a lot of um, other fluids that you drink through the day that can create a diuretic effect. You can actually lose more water and become dehydrated when you drink things with caffeine, like coffee, tea, sodas, Anything you drink with caffeine is very dehydrating. And of course, alcohol, right? Um, if you reflect back on the last time you drank a lot of alcohol the next morning, you're going to be completely dehydrated. That's why you have a headache. That's why your lips are dry. And so alcohol is a diuretic and it tends to dehydrate you as well. In this segment, Dr. Berg mentions the diuretic effect of caffeine. And while he's right that caffeine is a diuretic, the effects are mild at moderate doses of caffeine. Beyond that, the effects disappear once you're used to drinking caffeine, like in this study that fed the same amount of liquids to participants who were habitual caffeine drinkers and found no changes in the amount of water in the body after several days. Ultimately, while caffeine can be a diuretic, the molecule, caffeine, is suspended in a huge amount of water, so the diuretic effect may be present but it may not budge water content within the body, which is the most important measure. As for alcohol, it is also a diuretic and it can lead to mild dehydration, but it also depends on how you consume it, straight or mixed. Other studies also show that if you are less than ideally hydrated, alcohol's dehydrating effects are less severe because your body combats the diuretic effect. Still, he has a point here. Normally, it's always good practice to drink some water after drinking alcohol. What happens with someone with high sugar? They're peeing a lot. They have urinary frequency and they're thirsty a lot too. So the more sugar in your blood, the more your body's gonna get rid of water and the more dehydrated you're going to be. And so fruit juices, sodas, things with sugar will greatly dehydrate you. Okay, on this point, he really loses me. He makes a faulty comparison to justify a stance. Diabetic individuals have a body that is chronically in a pathological state. So the comparison to someone without diabetes, which is the majority of the population, is nonsensical, but I'll work with it regardless. He's right that diabetics tend to have to use the restroom more frequently, but only when their blood sugar levels are uncontrolled, which is never the case for people with normal insulin sensitivity, but I digress. The kidneys in the diabetic situation aren't trying to dump water as described earlier. They're reducing their reabsorption of things like glucose, leaving more sugar in the urine to dispense of it. So again, this is not a situation that occurs in healthy or even moderately healthy individuals, or even in those with diabetes that control it in other ways. So the carryover to having a sugary drink is simply not based in fact. Now, what's fascinating is that um, you have all these electrolyte sport drinks with added sugar. And apparently the idea is that if you're exercising, you need some sugar to replace the loss of glucose, right? When you exercise and they call this hydration, but um, is it really hydrating you? Does consuming glucose hydrate you? I'm gonna tell you, it dehydrates you. It pulls water from the cell. There is an interesting study, which I'll put down below. It's called the Nurses Health Study 2, which they did on a certain age group from nine to 15. Now, this study wasn't about hydration, but 
it was interesting because it revealed an unknown consequence of drinking these healthy sports drinks. Now, the study found that if a teenager or young adult was consuming uh, at least one soda a day, they would have an extra pound of weight. And this is what they found. And I'm going to just generalize here. Uh, teenagers that consumed uh, one soda a day on a regular basis gained an additional two pounds of weight. Whereas those who consumed at least one sports drink a day, okay, these so-called healthy sports drinks with electrolytes, but with added sugar, gained three and a half pounds of fat extra on their bodies. So the sports drink produced more fat than the sodas. Now, this is probably because the sports drinks uh, usually come in like 32 ounces and sodas come in a 12 ouncer. So when you look at the label, you have to look at the serving size and uh, rarely does anyone just drink one serving size. They drink the whole thing and there's more serving size in sports drinks. He then veers off and mentions a study where participants gained more weight using sports drinks compared to sodas. And he has several good points here. First, I would also conclude that the portion sizes of the sports drinks are larger than for the sodas. Therefore, this is where the weight gain came from, an astute observation. I think it's also a good point that people really don't need to refuel with sports drinks after casual sports. The sugar is largely unnecessary, unless you're pushing your body for hours and intensely. Even then, there are alternatives that are just as effective, except maybe at replenishing glycogen, but that's a different conversation. Ultimately, it tends to be overkill for most with a benefit for a minority of individuals. Dr. Berg has one more point I wanted to address in his video wherein he encourages people to buy these urine strips to find out if they're dehydrated, and he says this. Now, are there any tests that you can do to see if you're drinking too much water? Sometimes people say, well, check your color of your urine and it should be clear, but I think there's a better test. In fact, it's pretty inexpensive. You could buy on Amazon or another platform, uh, these little urine strips that measure something called specific gravity. And that will give you a good rough estimate on whether you're slightly dehydrated or you're really dehydrated or you've drinking too much water because on this urine strip that you're gonna get, you're gonna measure a lot of different things, but specific gravity measures and compares the density, how concentrated your urine is to actual water. I can firmly say that you'd be wasting your money buying those strips because pea color is more than enough of an indication if you're drinking enough. Light yellow is the target, clear is too much, dark yellow or green if you're the Hulk is too much, and keep it simple, stupid, KISS. Who remembers that acronym? Anyway, if you want more of this kind of content breaking down the science of others, then check out the rest of my series. Or if you want to see more of me breaking down some of Dr. Berg's claims, then check out that specific series. I'm gonna go drink a lake and call myself dehydrated. Till next time, bye.